Today we're going to learn how to remove rust relatively easy and cheaply. And basically when it comes to restoring an old product, uh, you have a couple of options when it comes to removing the rust. And, and you can either use sandpaper and sand it down or a wire brush, uh, basically doing it manually. Uh, you can use some chemicals. Um, there's a, a product out there called Naval Jelly that Loctite owns. Uh, it's a jelly you rub on and uh, it just eats the rust away. It works pretty well. Uh, or you can do it with electrolysis. Uh, other people use vinegars and other mild forms of acid. Uh, I particularly like electrolysis. It's worked really well for me in the past, and it's painless, it's easy to do, and I'll show you how to do that. So what we're going to de-rust is we have an old tackle box, and this tackle box is actually in really good shape. The worst part of it is on the bottom, and it's still pretty solid, so we're not going to lose any integrity by removing the rust, um, but it does need removed. And there's a lot of crevices and a lot of cracks that if you had a wire brush, it would just be kind of hard to get into. Especially things like these little buckles. Uh, you could always clean the top, uh, not underneath it, or you could remove the buckle and then put it back on. But of course, you, you risk breaking the buckle uh, because these things are just pieces of metal that they, they bent. They were built very cheaply. These are very old uh, tackle boxes. Uh, and uh, back then, things were made good, but uh, they were just kind of press fit. Everything was just kind of bent uh, and riveted. So that's what we're going to do today. And how we're going to do that is we have a five gallon bucket. And in that bucket, we have a metal popcorn container. We also have some washing soda. And then we're going to put some water in it. Now, basically, uh, this tin can is, is rusted out, so it's junk. So we're going to make it rust even more with this process. We're going to fill this bucket up with water. And we're going to use this soda, this washing soda, to make the water conductive. Now, some people use salt. I don't like salt because salt causes things to rust. Um, you pull the item out and you try to clean it up and the salt water makes it get a little bit of rust on it. I like using washing soda. Um, I've seen people use baking soda and I've used baking soda and people tell you do not use the baking soda. It's worked fine for me in the past, but I have better luck with washing soda. You can buy this in a big box store. It's only a couple bucks for a giant box that'll last you a long, long time. So what you do is you sit your item in the water and you use anything metal uh, that you're willing to sacrifice. Uh, some people use wrenches. Uh, some people use uh, random pieces of metal. I've seen people use railroad spikes. Um, just whatever you can find that you're willing to throw away later. And in this case, this tin is being thrown away. It's too rusty. It's got rust all through it. And we're going to make it rust out even more. So we're going to put some rocks in the bottom. And we're going to take this, take this tackle box. And we're going to sit it down inside this tin can. And we're going to set it up so that this tackle box does not touch this tin can. And then we're going to put some of this washing soda in the fluid to make the fluid conductive. And then we're going to walk over to a car battery and, uh, and hook it up. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Okay, now that we're all set up, we have the, uh, the tin that's in the bucket. It's clamped to the positive terminal of a battery cable. The actual... Um, tackle box that's metal is clamped to the negative that's very important the positive always goes to the sacrificial metal and when I say sacrificial it is sacrificial because the rust is going to be removed from the device you're trying to restore and it'll be put onto the metal that you're willing to sacrifice so again in this case we had a rusty tin um, that uh, that was going to be thrown away anyhow so it became our sacrificial metal so once you add power to this, and right now there is power to this, you'll see some small bubbles coming out of it, uh, you've started the electrolysis process. Now the bubbles you're seeing are oxygen and hydrogen, so you want to do this in a well-ventilated area, or as you can see, we're, we're outside. And uh, you don't want to breathe any of that, that's bad. And actually, you really want to use uh, iron uh, for your sacrificial. You don't want to use anything else like stainless, because uh, it'll put an off gas out that um, is not friendly to breathe, it's harmful to breathe. So, literally, negative clamp on the device you want to keep, positive clamp on the sacrificial. If you look straight down, you will notice that uh, it's hard to tell 
but the actual device I'm trying to save is not touching the metal surroundings and it's not sitting on the bottom this tackle box is sitting on a rock actually a bunch of rocks uh, so it's not a dead short because if this touches this it's a dead short and you don't want that you want everything to be isolated in the water and then what you're going to do is you're going to add uh, some of the uh, um, soda to it the washing soda and again this is not baking soda it's washing soda you can use baking soda they tell you don't do it I've done it and it's worked fine but what this does is it makes the water a little more elect um, conductive uh, which will speed the process up quite a bit so let's go add some of that right now and I'm gonna add about a cup um, there really is no science to this um, it doesn't take much, and it'll stir itself, too. I mean, a lot of people go in here and stir it. And uh, obviously, the whole thing isn't submerged, so when we're done, we're going to have to flip it over and do it again. So some sprinkling on the top isn't a big deal. We'll flip it over and de-rest the other side. Uh, but that's it. Uh, I'll let this thing sit overnight, and uh, we'll do another video and, and, and show you here uh, right after this what happens. But there'll be a scum of rust on the top of the water, and uh, the other piece of metal will be just rusted to heck and the uh, tackle box will have no rust on it. And I just plugged it right into my battery on the car. You can use any battery, any 12 volt battery will work well. You could use a battery charger. Some battery chargers are kind of finicky, they need to see a battery. Uh, some of the newer ones, but an old battery charger would work great. Or you could even use a DC welder. But that's all there is to this process. I don't know if you can hear it through the microphone or not, but there is a, a sizzling sound. Uh, basically the bubbles uh, are being created through the electrolysis process. And these bubbles are hydrogen and oxygen. Um, you can light them off, which is kind of fun. I'm sure the neighbors are getting annoyed by this because it's kind of loud, although I bet the microphone doesn't uh, indicate how loud this is. That was extremely loud. I'm sure the microphone didn't say how loud it was. But uh, again, it's just hydrogen and oxygen that's being created in the bubbles. So we've been about an hour and uh, you can see the uh, over here on the side the uh, bubbles are starting to clear up so I would uh, make an assumption that there's no more rust uh, being removed on this side uh, and you can see some chunks of rust that are floating floating right on the top in fact there's, there's one right there and uh, if you look around in this gooey mess you can see an awful lot of rust that's floating so kind of excited about this one it's doing exactly what it was supposed to be doing it's taking the rust off so I wanted to show you um, uh, what happened when I pulled it out. Uh, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell in the light, but the rust usually turns like a gray and a black. Uh, the paint usually just peels right off just, just like that. So you're looking at, at bare metal. Uh, in fact, here's some, here's some more of it that I haven't touched. And effortlessly, the, the paint just comes right off. Um, if I left it in there longer and I'll put it back in, I can get the rust off of these, uh, these pieces. In fact, it, it, they'll probably scrape off. Uh, it's coming off. Same with the inside. We'll just scrape off all the pieces. It'll just literally not, it'll be zero effort. Look at that. The paint just falls right off and you're left with uh, rust-free metal. So that'll be pretty easy to restore. We'll have to uh, put a little prep work in it and uh, give it a new uh, paint job and, and this will look like a brand new uh, tackle box. Uh, inside, I wanted to show you this. Get out in the sun. Get some light in here. That is the tin. And you can see the tin is completely rusty. And that's why I always call this sacrificial metal. Because the tin uh, takes all the rust. Uh, the piece with the positive um, uh, battery cable will rust up really bad. And the piece with the negative cable cleans up really, really nice. So that's all there is to the process. Nothing more. It's pretty simple. Pretty straightforward and pretty cheap.